Hi everyone, I'm Rick Beato. In today's Everything Music, we're gonna talk about five things that you didn't know about Ludwig van Beethoven. Number one, Beethoven was born into a family of musicians that was at least two generations in the making. His father, Johann, was a court composer and tenor and was also a violent alcoholic. He even went so far as to lie about Beethoven's age, saying he was born in 1772 instead of 1770 so that he would appear younger in his performances. Despite having a very abusive parent, Beethoven grew to love music and became one of the greatest composers in history. Number two, did Beethoven and Mozart ever meet? Well, Beethoven traveled from Bonn to Vienna where Mozart lived in 1787. Now Bonn and Vienna are about 450 miles apart. He was there for a short period of time, maybe about six weeks. There have been many accounts related to this that say that they did meet, that Beethoven had some lessons from Mozart, but it's never really been established whether they met. One thing is for sure, Mozart's influence on Beethoven lasted throughout his life. In fact, there was a passage from Mozart's 40th symphony that was written into Beethoven's sketchbook while he was working on his own fifth symphony. Number three, Beethoven began going deaf around 1796 when he was just 25 years old. What began as buzzing and ringing in the ears eventually increased to total deafness around 1816. In 1802, Beethoven was at a breaking point in his life. When on a retreat to Heiligenstadt, just outside Vienna, he wrote the famous Heiligenstadt Testament, which was a letter written to his two brothers, Karl and Johann, on October 6th, 1802. Beethoven writes, but think that for six years now I've been hopelessly afflicted, made worse by senseless physicians from year to year, deceived with hopes of improvement, finally compelled to face the prospect of a lasting malady whose cure will take years or perhaps be impossible. Though born with a fiery active temperament, even susceptible to the diversions of society, I was soon compelled to withdraw myself to live a life alone. If at times I tried to forget all this, oh, how harshly I was flung back by the doubly sad experience of my bad hearing. Yet it was impossible for me to say to people, speak loud or shout for I am deaf. Oh, how could I possibly admit an infirmity in the one sense which ought to be more perfect in me than others, a sense which I once possessed in the highest perfection, a perfection such as few in my profession enjoy or have ever enjoyed. Oh, I cannot do it. Therefore, forgive me when you see me draw back when I would have gladly mingled with you. He went on to say, but what a humiliation for me when someone standing next to me heard a flute in the distance and I heard nothing, or someone heard a shepherd singing and again, I heard nothing. Such incidents drove me almost to despair a little more of that and I would have ended my life. It was only my art that held me back. Ah, it seemed impossible to leave the world until I had brought forth all that I felt was within me. So I endure this wretched existence. Number four, which is possibly the greatest concert of all time. This is actually a real thing that happened. On December 22nd, 1808, Beethoven, acting as promoter, conductor, and concert pianist, staged a remarkable concert in Vienna's Theater an der Wien, which premiered several of the most influential works in music history. The concert was held in a very cold concert hall, which was approximately four hours in length and featured the public premieres of Beethoven's fifth and sixth symphonies, the fourth piano concerto, and the choral fantasy, which featured orchestra, chorus, vocal soloists, and Beethoven as piano soloist. So part one of the concert began with the premiere of his sixth symphony, the pastoral in F major. Beautiful, beautiful piece. This was followed by opera Fido, a concert aria for soprano and orchestra. Next was the Gloria from the mass in C major for vocal soloist, chorus, and orchestra. And part one concluded with the premiere of Beethoven's fourth piano concerto, which is possibly one of the greatest concertos of all time. Certainly my favorite piano concerto of all time. This was just part one. So after the intermission was the premiere of Beethoven's fifth symphony. Then this was followed by the Sanctus for the Mass in C major. Next was a 
Fantasia, an improvised Fantasia by Beethoven. This is after he'd already played the entire fourth piano concerto in the first half of the concert. We're talking, you know, three hours into this. Then the concert concluded with the premiere of the choral fantasy for piano soloist, vocal soloist, chorus, and orchestra. This was the greatest concert of all time. And number five, as his deafness progressed, Beethoven tended to use the middle and low frequency notes in his compositions because he could hear them better when writing and performing his music. When he became deaf and completely reliant on his inner ear for composing, he was no longer compelled to create music that he could actually hear when performed. You can see a change in his compositional style as well as his orchestrations. Some of his greatest works from this third or late period of compositions, these included works such as the last five piano sonatas, including the famous Hammer Clavier, or the last five string quartets, or the Ruins of Athens Overture and Incidental Music, the Diabelli Variations for Piano, the Great Mass Misa Solemnis, which is generally considered to be one of Beethoven's supreme achievements, and like Bach's Mass in B minor, one of the most significant mass settings of all times. And lastly, the Ninth Symphony, which features the Ode to Joy. It was completed in 1824, three years before Beethoven's death, and is one of the best known works in classical music and almost universally considered to be one of the greatest compositions in Western music. Just imagine the kind of mind it took to create a piece of this scope with nothing more than his inner ear to perform it. Beethoven was not only one of the greatest composers of all time, he was also one of the greatest minds.